Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, TrueNest Scale and um, upgrading your Plex uh, Docker application from an old version uh, that TrueNest Scale supported to now. I guess over time since the early days of TrueNest Scale, the way and the configuration variables in these applications seems to have changed um, and so you'll see what I mean. So we're going to cover a number of topics here just because I've had a number of problems doing the upgrade. Uh, in short, um, I'm going to say like about a year ago, I installed the uh, Plex Docker application in TrueNAS scale. Everything worked and it's been working for a long time. But recently, I'm going to say near the end of 2022, just uh, after upgrading the application in Docker, it just would not start up anymore. I would click... Uh, you know, on the three dots here, I would try to go to the shell. That wouldn't work. It would say something about the container wasn't there. I'd click logs. It was always blank. And I uh, just couldn't figure out what was going on. I did a lot of reading online. And there's a number of things we're going to cover today in terms of some of the problems as to why it wouldn't come online, um, how not to lose your configuration in these apps going forward. And each app's a little bit different, but the concept uh, that... IX Systems seems to have implemented in here. We're going to talk about that, at least using Plex as an example. Every app will be have some slight differences, but I hope this helps. So to start off with, uh, we'll just take a look at the configuration that I have for my Plex configuration. So I'll just click Edit here, and you'll see as I scroll down, um, there's new configuration parameters. So there's this uh, that one doesn't matter, but configure host network, I think I think you're supposed to have that turned on. Irrelevant to this discussion. When it comes down to storage, this is an important one. Um, and namely, this config volume. And, you know, one thing I always thought to myself when I was setting up these applications is, where does it store the configuration of the application? Not, not the Docker configuration necessarily here, but, uh, you know, when I actually open up the web page uh, to configure Plex and everything, where does all that get stored? And how do I not lose it? Because inherently, Docker applications, you stop and, and restart them and whatnot, the image itself should be, a, you should be able to delete it and install a new version without losing your configuration if things are done properly. So let's talk about a few concepts here. So here's this new parameter that didn't exist before and in earlier versions of uh, the Docker application it kind of did this step behind the scenes and stored it in a place that maybe you don't know where it was and so the short version when it comes to Plex configuration I'm going to show where the old configuration was stored and how if you create um, if you upgrade your application to this new version where you have the ability to configure it here how you can retain your Plex configuration. Um, so here you can see I have this set to mount tank. Uh, Plex data is the data set where all of my Plex information is. And I created a folder in there called config and that's where the Docker application is going to look for this. Now one thing I'm going to talk about is if you look online at the at Docker Hub for Plex as a Docker container um, you should do this for any specific Docker app. They talk about all the parameters that you can use to configure that Docker image. And so for this one, there's this config parameter. And this says the Plex library location. This is basically the configuration for Plex. Okay, So this parameter is basically directly uh, related to this item here. And so this is where all the configuration files are going to be stored. Um, and the rest of the stuff is kind of, we'll get back to later. So I'm just going to close this. Uh, now we're going to talk about data sets. So here you can see I have a data set called Plex Data. Okay. And that's where all of my movies and local videos and whatnot are stored. And remember, under Plex Data, I have various folders for my media, but I created a config folder so that uh, the configuration of Plex is kept there. Now, if I wanted to, I could have created a separate data set here and just picked that location uh, in my Docker Hub, or, sorry, in my uh, Docker application parameter 
and just specified it separately, but I want to back it all up under here, my media and configuration. Um, all right, so let's talk about the previous version of the Docker application. Where did it keep its configuration? Well, you'll see here this ix-applications data set. This, this gets created automatically in TrueNAS scale. And this is where IX Systems keeps all of their uh, Docker application information in this data set. So that's important to note. Now, one thing I, I did a bunch of poking around and I noticed a few things. So you'll see here in, in the shell script, I'm remoted into my TrueNAS scale system. And you can see mount, tank, IX applications. So this was that IX applications data set. Then you go under releases. The releases folder and under releases you're going to see all of your apps your docker apps this this one was called vsoft plex so if i come back here to apps right vsoft plex but you're going to see all all your other applications are going to have a folder under releases now under vsoft plex there's this folder called volumes ix volumes and they created this ixplex config. And under there, I'm in that folder right now, there was this folder called library. I renamed the folder to BKP library as I was doing some testing, but it was called library. And what I ended up doing was, um, remember in my configuration for VSoft Plex, I Notice when I upgraded that there's this new parameter I could specify where Plex configuration should be, and I said in this config folder. So if I go to this other tab here, I'm in the Plex data and I'm in the config folder, which I created myself. I copied that library folder from this IX applications, IX Plex config path to here. And once I did that, all my uh, configuration parameters. When I opened the uh, web portal for Plex, um, all of my configuration was retained. Whereas um, if you if you were to point it to that config folder and there's no library folder there, Plex is going to think, oh, this is a brand new install and you're going to see the uh, main screen where you have to configure Plex from scratch. So that's one way to keep your configuration is copy it from that um, IX Plex config to the location you specified for your configuration within your Plex app right here. Now another thing is for your data files, I did notice uh, my original problem as to why the application wasn't even starting um, when I when it tried to deploy Plex, it would just sit there saying deploying and I couldn't open a shell and I couldn't see any log information. I had no idea what was going on. There is a known problem that you that might affect you and so under this mount path um, what I ended up doing was um, I mounted let's see here I had everything pointing to Plex data the root path of where all my data was so I just had one mount point which was mount tank Plex data and I also have a share an SMB share, and we'll take a look at that here, um, an SMB share pointing to the same path. Now there's a problem. If you have an SMB share pointed to a folder, a data set, and you have that same data set mounted as your one of your data folders for Plex, it's not going to come online. It's something that gets blocked, and if you look on the forums, you're going to notice a number of people have uh, different ways to get around it. Now for me, the way I got around it is instead of mounting directly to Plex data here um, under my storage, I ended up going to the various folders under Plex data. So, um, you know, I had like four or five folders and I just mounted each one individually instead of the root folder of Plex data. And so because it's not, um, I'm not using the same data folder as my SMB share, it's like subfolders, that seems to have solved it. Now another way that you can get yourself up and running without having to remap all of your data folders here is you can go into shares, you can stop the share, 
um, like turn it off temporarily, start your Plex application, and then go back into shares and turn it back on. And as long as Plex starts first, it, it looks like it'll work. But I just wanted to point out all of those things that, uh, you know, why your application may not start up and also talk about how to retain your configuration. So hopefully uh, this video helps you uh, get an understanding in terms of configuration of all your various apps. Um, and 